volatile, unlike every other mainstream debuff in the game, will always count as an ability no matter what causes it. What this means is it can't proc stuff like Rarity Sprout or Rampage, but it can proc stuff like Echo of Expulsion. Echo of Expulsion states killing an enemy with an ability will cause them to explode, and as you could guess, if you kill an enemy with volatile with this fragment equipped, they explode. So I pair this with the incredibly complex infinite volatile rounds build and you can basically give any void weapon you have a inconsistent chain reaction. Also, if you have Ember of Combustion equipped and you're standing in your own well, every single time you get a kill with a solo weapon, the enemy will ignite. This is because while you're standing in your own well, all the damage that comes from your weapons is technically counted as super damage, which grants you the ability to ignite enemies and it also grants you the ability to do other stuff like pierce invincibility shields or do more damage to wyvern. It does, however, come with the downside that no other empowerment over Well of Radiance will actually affect you. But stuff like Lucent Blade and Banish Shield won't actually give you the damage buff that they should be giving you. However, amplifiers, aka things that stack with empowerments like Font of Might and the Warm Mind Cell debuff will still actually affect you, but no need to worry about those. Also, also, Fun Spots are pretty chill. Just kidding, they're pretty hot. <laughs> but they- <laughs> I'm so bad, oh my god. But they get even better when you're using them with Hammer of Soul. Not only do they they spawn when you initially cast a super, but they also spawn when you hit something with a hammer, and they also give you a boost to your super length. They also give you the hidden ability of allowing you to throw hammers faster. If you combine that with the fact that they extend your super as well, it actually gives you the ability to throw four more hammers while you're in your super, just as long as you have the sunspot buff, which can actually be really powerful because, well, sunspots are really goddamn powerful, and also they can just technically last forever as long as you just keep staying in them. And as one final cool thing, if you use your super and play oh, that's my chair. If you use your super and place all of the hammers in the same spot, it will max out my GPU. Which is great! Also, 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 slide cancelling with the speed boost buff activated is some of the fastest type of movement in the game. However, if you are holding a bow, it is not, because for some reason you just stop at the end of your slide. But why it did this? I have no idea. I literally no clue. It it works with some weapons, it works with some others to a lesser extent. I don't know, but with bows, it's by far the worst. Also, 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 also. While you're using your Icarus dash, you can't take momentum damage, meaning you can stop yourself from dying by just dashing at the right time. On a similar note, while you're in your Dawnblade super, the directional control of your glide is converted into a burst of speed. Meaning if you use strafe glide, you can get real quick, real goddamn fast. This also works with heat risers just to a much, much lesser extent. And on another similar note, if you use heat risers while you're in your Dawnblade Super, Icarus dashing will cost a shit ton less energy, and it is genuinely a quite substantial amount. However, even with the amazing change it makes, it still still doesn't stop the Super from being fucking awful. Also, 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 plus also, also. Stunning Recovery is an origin trait you can get on Nightfall weapons, and it's actually pretty goddamn good. The trait states stunning a champion will partially refill the magazine, partially refill your health, and give you a boost to recovery for a short time. And as you can imagine with that, it's pretty good on primary weapons, but it's also quite easy to just abuse in general. Firstly, you can just use stasis to freeze a champion, which in doing so will unstun them, meaning you can stun them again, propping the origin trait again. Or, you can go even further and just use an ability to stun them. Since the origin trait doesn't actually need the weapon to stun them itself, it just needs the weapon out while you stun a champion. Meaning you can just stun a champion with an ability or anything else for that matter while you have your hothead out, reloading it and giving you a burst of healing which is obviously very powerful. And this season you can go even further than that because well we have stasis overload grenades, meaning you can not only stun them but also freeze them at the same time which unstuns them I mean, you can stun them again, and yeah, you could see where that goes. Hey, it's me from a different voiceover. Also, Barrow is a pretty useful tool, but there's a bit more to them than you may think. Firstly, you can emote on them, which is nice, but if you do it in the air, you'll do a different emote, and if you land afterwards, you'll get a small bit of boost back. You can also get that boost back by just rotating in any direction. Just keep in mind that you have to do a full rotation, and you also have to, you know, land. You can also do another more secret tech on Sparrows called reboosting. Reboosting is when you boost again while boosting. Does kind of say it in the name. And 
and in doing so you'll get a small bit of boost. If you do this on the ground the speed boost will basically immediately dissipate. However if you use this in the air you'll keep that speed in the air which is pretty good because you'll keep going fast. You can also reboost directly after falling to immediately get a boost of momentum. Hey me again still in a different voiceover. Also there are actually some pretty easy ways to increase the chance of special and heavy ammo dropping. The first and definitely more well known way is to just equip two special weapons. Doing so will quite substantially increase the chance for both special and heavy ammo to drop. But the second and definitely a lot less known way is to actually just wait. While you're not killing anything the chance for special and heavy ammo to drop gradually increases. When you kill something it does reset but if you just wait 30 seconds and then kill something you have a pretty good chance to get special and heavy of course it's not guaranteed but it is something you can do if you really do need ammo i don't know how many of these i need to record also all in turrets suck fortunately you can stand on them also they can't shoot up so that's nice. I should have probably counted them also. If you switch with the pulse rifle and then instantly switch weapon, you'll actually only shoot one bullet. However, strangely enough, this only works with the new pulse rifle, revision zero. Every other pulse rifle in the game doesn't work with, which is just kind of strange because not only does it only work with one weapon, but also in the past, this used to work with every pulse rifle. It's just strange to think about why Pungy would nerf such a genuinely minor thing. I think this is the final one also. Tether doesn't just spread damage, it actually spreads debuffs as well, or at least it spreads some debuffs. Most debuffs it will do vision like Wither Horde, but some debuffs like Volatile it will actually spread to other affected targets. Also, if you kill a weapon in a tether and it kills another weapon, no, that's not right. If you kill a weapon in a- that's still not right. <laughs> if you kill an enemy in a tether and it kills another connected enemy, it will count towards that weapon's progression, meaning it will increase its kill time, kill tag, kill- what the fuck are they called? Kill tracker, and it'll also count towards weapon XP, or at least it did, because for some reason it doesn't anymore, which is just strange. I don't know why, it swear to god it worked in the past. Regardless, you still spread debuffs through Tether. I really hope I was correct on that last or so. Also, This is a fun one. Mayhem grants you an insanely strong regen multiplied to your abilities, which is obvious, but what it also means is that basically any single source of additional regen will be multiplied by like 20 times. And that can make for some pretty interesting things. Also as another side note, shield throw can just go through some of the doors on cauldron. Why? Dunno, but it does. So that's cool, I guess. It was in fact not the last one, also. If you play in controller or your control schemes just kind of look like this, then higher handling can actually be more detrimental to you. The reason being is because when you hold a button to do anything, the game first registers the button as being pressed. And in this case, it means if you try to switch your heavy weapon, it first registers that button press as just a single button press. So you switch to your energy or vice versa. And then only after a certain amount of time, it registers the hold weapon swap and you go down to your heavy weapon. Most of the time, this isn't a big deal. But if you have a weapon with high handling or quick draw, you can sometimes actually switch to your energy weapon or vice versa before the game registers that you're trying to switch to a heavy weapon. Meaning that instead of switching directly to your heavy weapon, you're instead switching to your energy weapon first and then to your heavy weapon. Meaning you have to, you know, switch away from the energy weapon, which can take a lot more time. Now this is almost the final answer. You can't pull craft a weapon from collections. That's it. That's the whole thing. Yep, I, <laughs> I ran out of ideas. And finally, also, that's about it. If you like this and want more stuff you don't know type shit content, please tell me more stuff I don't know type shit content. Because I don't know type shit content. I don't know, I don't know a lot of stuff, I'm assuming at least. And I don't have enough ideas to make a second video. But yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed. See you.